I think it's time we got back to basics. Let's check out some modifications on the original all aluminum 5.7 liter LS1. Hello everybody, Armature Holder, and before we get going on our 5.7 liter, that's right, the original all aluminum 5.7 liter LS1, particularly for the guys down under, down in Australia, who are always asking me, Richard, why don't you do more stuff with the original 5.7 liter? Welcome to the channel, but let's get going. We've got some modifications to a 5.7 liter, and quite honestly, if we did it with a 4.8 or a 5.3 or a 6.0, it would kind of be the same thing. But this is for you guys that want the original 5.7 liter. We've got some intake modifications, some exhaust modifications, all kinds of cool stuff on the original OG LS1. Okay, guys, let's jump right in. We're going to take a look at some modifications we made way back in the day on a factory LS1, the all aluminum 5.7 liter, the OG motor, the one that kind of started this all and one that has the name that we apply to this entire engine family. But this was done way back in 2006. And I wanted to show this because I get a lot of comments, especially from the guys in Australia. So shout out to the guys in Australia. Um, they have the LS1s, but they don't have the same other motors that we have that we enjoy that came in all the trucks. The the 4.8s, the 5.3s, the 6 liters, not nearly as prevalent. But they always ask, hey, what happens if we do this to the 5.7 liter? And I'm going to show you it does basically the same thing. In fact, if you were to take the modifications and do them to a 5.3 and then do them to a 6.0 and then do them to a 5.7, the changes would be right in the middle of the other two because that's what happens with displacement. But let's go ahead and I'm going to show you a bunch of modifications that we ran way back in the day. This was a 5.7 liter, meaning it was just a factory 5.7 liter. This one was destined for a Camaro that came right off of the assembly line. We got this, the, or the guys from West Tech got this from the guys at the Chevy race shop. They were bone stock. They had been sitting for a couple of years and never been run until we finally decided, hey, look, let's run these things and, you know, let's make some power. And in fact, this one had already been run quite a bit. We had already made some modifications to it. As you can see, it, we had replaced the factory LS1 5.7 liter cylinder heads with a set of RHS cylinder heads. They, they were, I believe that they were as cast. We still had the stock early LS1 intake manifold on there. We had a fast throttle body on there. It says 60 millimeter, but it was not a 60 millimeter. It was an 80 millimeter. What, what we did first is we ran it with the factory exhaust manifolds. And then I want to show you what headers do basically on a kind of mild combination. The other thing is this motor was already equipped with a camshaft. It had a very small mild camshaft. The Comp 265 camshaft, a HR265. I'll go ahead and show you the specs up here, but you know, like a 212, 218 kind of a camshaft. Um, what we would think of now as kind of a stage one or two truck cam kind of deal. But run in this manner, and we first ran it with the stock LS1 exhaust manifolds, and then we had two and a half inch exhaust extensions coming off of that. We had no mufflers and then no cat backs or none of that stuff. So just an extension off of the stock exhaust manifolds, meaning they were going to flow as well as those stock exhaust manifolds could possibly flow. And here's what happened in terms of power. Our little 5.7 liter produced 449 horsepower and 425 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we replaced the stock exhaust manifolds with a set of long tube headers. These particular headers were inch and three-quarter. Let's go ahead and take a look. There we go. And you can see long tube headers. We've come to a lot of guys think that long tube headers, how oh, they flow better and they make more power on the big end, but stock exhaust manifolds somehow in some way in some world make more low speed power, but they don't. In fact, long tube headers generally make way more power down low than stock exhaust manifolds. In fact, in this case, as you can see, they make more power all the way through the curve. So the peak numbers were up to 460 horsepower. Peak torque went from 425 foot-pounds up to 434 foot-pounds. You can see down here at 33,000, 3,500, things were doing pretty well in terms of torque. We had 370 foot-pounds up to 389 foot-pounds. So almost 20, a gain of almost 20 foot-pounds of torque down low. And this is what we have come to expect with long tube headers versus stock exhaust manifolds. Now that we've taken a look at the exhaust, let's check out the intake side. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens when we upgrade the intake manifold on our LS1. And for the people that don't know about this, the early LS1 actually is the second worst <laughs> flowing and 
powerful uh, long runner, you know, cross ram style, factory style intake manifold that GM ever made for the LS engine family. The only one that is worse than that is the front wheel drive LS4 intake manifold. But the early LS1 is very bad. And they introduced not long after that the LS6 manifold. In fact, then they made that a running change and started running the LS6 manifold on all the later LS1s. And it definitely makes more power, as we'll see here. I'll kind of show you uh, how much power these intake manifolds are worth. But we'll start off with our factory LS1 intake manifold. And we had a mechanical 80 millimeter um, fast or a, it was either fast or a AccuFab throttle body. Basically, a stock, same as a stock size opening on it. We had um, a set of long tube headers on here. These were actually Cook step headers, so they're inch and three quarter to inch and seven eighths. We had our RHS heads on here. We had the the um, 265 camshaft in here, the comp camshaft in here, and other than that, 5.7 liter LS1. And we even ran this with the factory management system, and then it was tuned back in the day by, um, I think Tom did the tuning on this, because this was early on when we first got these motors running. But here's what happened with a stock intake manifold, 462 horsepower and 435.7, 436 foot-pounds of torque. And here's when we did our first upgrade. We installed a BBK aluminum intake manifold and a matching throttle body. Other than that, injector stayed the same. All of that was the same. Here's what happened when we put the BBK intake manifold on here. See, pretty good size gains. And this goes to tell you that, goes to show you that the factory intake manifold, obviously very restrictive on this. In fact, this thing made more power everywhere. We started our run at 3000, went out to 6600 RPM, but equipped with the BBK, 488.8, so 489 horsepower. Let's see here. Yeah, 489 horsepower. Peak torque was also up 450 foot-pounds. And like I said, a little bit of a gain down low here, but a lot of gain past 3,500 RPM and all the way out. So this is something you would definitely notice. You know, having a little bit of a gain at the top is one thing, but having a good solid gain all the way through. So the BBK manifold is certainly better than the factory LS1 intake manifold. And if you kind of want to see how all intake manifolds do on these things, take a look. I have a video up. I'll go ahead and put a um we'll put a link here to basically when i ran 20 different ls cathedral port intake manifolds and, and that's what this is so now let's take a look at one final intake manifold and this was a fast intake manifold and this was actually the early wilson fast the original og one you will take a look at our fast one the fast manifold definitely better than the BBK and certainly a ton better than the factory LS1. And later on, the 102 millimeter would be better yet. But on this particular application, fast manifold pushed this thing over 500 horsepower, 501 horsepower. Peak torque was way up 470 foot pounds, 471 foot pounds, 470.7 foot pounds of torque. And again, big gains past uh, 36 or 3700 RPM with a you know, pretty sizable gain in torque over both the factory manifold and the BBK manifold, and we still see, you know, making as much or more power down low, at least down at 3,000 RPM. So <laughs> the, the moral of the story, the fast manifold on a 48536062, very hard to beat for a cathedral port application. Okay, our final test on our 5.7 liter LS1 was actually to show you what happens when you put extensions on the exhaust. So we have our long tube headers. We normally put a collector extension on them just to kind of simulate the exhaust. But what happens when you actually put an exhaust on there? And oddly enough, a lot of people think that you lose a ton of power by putting, you know, ex exhaust on there and muffler, but not if you put the right ones on there. What normally happens is we just see a big change in power right in the specific RPM range. It has nothing to do with the flow of the exhaust system. And it's actually a tuning or reflective wave that's happening here. And I'll show you what I mean. This was our 5.7 liter. I'll take a look at our test description here. We had our fast intake manifold on there, our 80 millimeter throttle body. We had our RHS heads. We had our small 265 comp cam. We had QTP inch and three quarter long tube headers on it. And we had a short collector extension, about 18 inches on the QTP. And this is the power curve. We made right at about 501 horsepower. 
Peak torque checked in at 470 foot-pounds. But here's what happened when we put a, a length of about four feet total, um, including our straight through, this was a three inch exhaust, straight through with straight through Flowmaster mufflers. So basically we just put a muffled exhaust on this and here's what happened. This is interesting. So the interesting thing is, first of all, there was really no change in power from about 4,400 RPM on up. It didn't affect the power at all at the top of the RPM range. If it was, it was one or two horsepower, very little. But what we did see is a dramatic change in power below that point. We see a big gain in torque from having the extension of the exhaust on there. So that's good news for you guys that are running full exhaust. And this is why we don't like to run just a long tube open header without some sort of collector extension on it. Normally we have like, I like running these mufflers when I'm running LS stuff because having the mufflers on just makes it so that it's not so loud and obnoxious. And as you can see, it really has no effect on peak power. It doesn't limit the power because you're running this but it does add low speed torque. So you have to make sure when you're doing these tests, especially if I'm going back and looking through other data and go, hey, I can compare this to this. You have to make sure that all of these variables are the same. Did you run the same header? Did you even, did you run right down to, did we run the same like collector length extension? And really the mufflers in this case were not a flow of, or a flow problem. Otherwise we would have seen that on the big end and we just didn't see that. But down here at no 3,700 RPM, we're looking at a difference of 400 foot pounds up to 420 foot pounds. So really, honestly, who wouldn't want an extra 20 foot pounds of torque, especially if that came with no loss in power on the top of the rev range. And there you guys have it, LS1 mods for my OG all aluminum 5.7 liter. Again, shout out to the guys in Australia and everybody else that has a 5.7 liter. But as I said, when we do these tests on a 5.7, the same kind of thing happens on a 4.8 or 5.3, a 6.0, 6.2. So you can use all of the data for any displacement LS. I'm Richard Oldman. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I'll keep testing.